Hello and welcome to the Custom Minis in Tailspire video. This video is going to come in two parts. The first part is going to be for the average user who just wants to download some custom minis and add them to Tailspire. And then the second part of the video or the second video is going to be for users that want to actually create their own custom minis and add them to Tailspire. So let's start off. So, in Tailspire, there have been three main plugins for adding custom content to Tailspire. There are some other plugins like Replicator and uh, Polymorph, but these are the three main plugins. The first plugin was the Custom Mini plugin, also known as CMP. The Custom Mini plugin is now obsolete by two generations, and after the uh, BR uh, Hero Forge integration update, it is no longer usable. Uh, the successor to Custom Mini plugin was the Extra, uh, Extra Assets Registration plugin, also known as EAR, powered by the uh, Extra Assets library. Um, and since the BR Hero Forge integration update, this plugin is also no longer usable. To replace those two, we now have the Custom Assets Library plugin, also known as TALP. It is the only plugin currently available for putting custom assets into the library. Now, how do you make assets, or what kind of assets can be used with um, TALP? So, in the beginning, when we had the Custom Mini plugin, uh, there were two um, different types of assets supported. One, you could just drop in your uh, OBJ and MTL file, and the OBJ MTL loader would load those assets. Uh, once we got to EAR and now Kelp, the OBJ MTL loader is no longer supported. It uh, was it was a quick way to get assets into uh, Tailspire for those who didn't want to muck around with Unity, but it was unreliable and the new way of getting assets into uh, Tailspire doesn't really promote the use of the um, OBJ MTL loader. So now uh, in order to get assets into Tailspire, you will need to create asset bundles or download asset bundles. Um, to use in, in Calp. Now with asset bundles, there are two uh, ways to bring those actually onto the board. There is the library. Um, this was supported uh, from the days of the uh, uh, EAR plugin and now is again supported in Calp. And that basically is to bring out the asset just like you bring out any other asset by opening up the app library, selecting the uh, minis uh, category, and then going through the groups and pulling out um, whatever asset you want. So when assets are downloaded or added, um, Kelp will find them and add them into your library so that they appear there like any other assets. Uh, the other way is to use the blueprint. If you have any asset on the board, you can uh, press Control C to copy that asset. It will copy a very odd looking string, um, which you can then put into your notepad or anywhere else, save it anywhere else. And anytime you then copy that weird string and paste it back, um, that asset plus all of its stats will reappear in Tailspire and you can drop it uh, there multiple times. Um, that uh, The blueprint uh, works with core and um, custom minis, so that's another way that you can bring, um, put those uh, customized minis into your board uh, without going through the library. Okay, so let's get started. So, if I'm a common user and I just want to download some uh, custom assets from uh, the Finder store, uh, how do I do, go about doing that? Well, I'm going to assume that you do have a modded Tailspire already. 
If you do not, there are multiple videos uh, that show you how to do that, including a very good one by Demon Gun. Um, and they, they will go through the process of uh, installing R2 Modman, which is the recommended uh, mod manager. Uh, R2 Modman basically um, allows you to uh, download, install, uninstall, disable, enable uh, plugins and asset bundles. So it's, it's a manager that you can easily um, run a modded Tailspire with and um, use whatever uh, packs uh, and plugins that you want. So I'm assuming you've already got that. If not, go see one of those videos first and then come back to here. So once you've got your Tailspire mod, what else do we need? So first of all, we definitely need CALP. So the custom asset library plugin. Uh, you can go either through the Thunderstore or in R2 Modman, there is an online uh, tab that you go, go to and it will also uh, show the contents of the Thunderstore. Uh, my personal preference is to use the actual web page, uh, tailspire.thunderstore.io, as opposed to using the R2 Modman online. Um, if you know exactly what plugin you're looking for and you just need to download it, the R2 Modman online uh, tab is great. Uh, but if you're kind of browsing the plugins or you want to get a new one and you don't know too much about it, going through the website is much better because it will show you the documentation page where you can get more information about that plugin. It will also tell you if there's any additional installation uh, steps. Uh, for some plugins, you do need to do some manual uh, steps to install them or to configure them. So you will see that right away. Um, and typically it will also tell you how to activate the plugin or uh, it'll tell you if there's some demo assets that come with the plugin. So especially for plugins, I recommend going through the web page as opposed to the R2 Modman online. So once we've got um, the Kelp uh, downloaded and uh, installed in uh, R2 Modman. The next thing that we're going to want to do is we still do want to download the extra asset registrations plugin. Now you may be asking me why when I just told you that the extra asset registration plugin is no longer being used. Yes, it is no longer being used, but what we've created is a basically a fake um, extra asset registration plugin that doesn't do anything, but what it does allow is your system to think that you have it installed. The reason for this is that some of the content uh, developers that have made um, some packs with extra minis put in the extra asset registrations plugin as a dependency, which means you can't use that pack unless you have it installed. Now, if we installed a actual version of extra asset registration, it would cause a whole bunch of exceptions um, in your logs. We don't want that. So we created this fake um, extra asset registration plugin that the plugin doesn't do anything, um, but the R2 mod man thinks you've got it installed. So any pack that requires it, it will now work. So it is recommended to download that one. Otherwise, you're going to have some packs that are not going to be available to you because um, uh, you don't have uh, the extra asset registration uh, plugin installed. Now, the good news is that any uh, if you download any pack that requires it, it will now download this uh, fake version and you won't need to worry about it. So once we've got those two, what else do we do? Well, then we just choose the packs, pack or packs that we want to download, um, presumably either plugins or in this case, most likely minis. And that's basically it. Now, I will say at this point, um, Calp is not fully um, supporting all the functions that um, the extra asset registration plugin did at this moment. Um, all of the functionality that uh, EAR had is planned to be um, reintroduced into Calp, but not all of it is available. So most, uh, most importantly right now, auras are not yet supported, and filters are not yet supported, and transformation is not yet supported. So if you download any packs that include any of these, uh, they will not work properly. 
uh, which does include the weather pack. It's a very common um, uh, asset bundle that uh, people download. The weather pack will not work yet because filters are not in implemented. And I believe that there's a, at least a couple of packs that are full of auras and those will not work yet either. But beyond that, if you then download the pack, that's all you need to do. Um, once the pack is downloaded, when you run Tailspire, um, Calp will recognize that you have a new pack. It will do a bunch of uh, regist uh, registering. And then once you start your game, uh, those assets will appear in your library wherever uh, the assets specified them to be. So uh, they will either show up in the existing uh, group names or potentially some new ones, uh, but they will appear in your library for you to draw out just like any other asset. So for using assets that are in Thunderstore, that's basically it. You download Calc, you download Ear just in case, or you don't really need to download Ear because any pack that requires it will automatically download it. And then you just download the packs that you want. Um, now, from there, we can get a little bit more advanced. Uh, with the current uh, solution to bringing custom minis into Tailspire, it is actually possible to have custom minis in a game that does not have the kelp plugin. More specifically, you can have custom uh, minis in a completely vanilla, non-modded version of Tailspire. Now, to do that, the process is very similar, except there is an additional step at the end. Uh, once again, you, you do need to start with um, at least one device that has kelp. You download the asset pack that you, uh, that you want. Once you run Tailspire at least once, that pack is going to be registered. And what that means is um, kelp is going to create some files associated with that pack. And kelp is going to uh, basically register it. As part of that process, it creates a a uh, file that allows you to register that pack on a computer that is not running kelp. So you can take the contents of, the, of that modified pack, put it on any other computer, run that script, and now it will register that. It will put it into the um, put a link in the Tailweaver folder of the uh, Tailspire pointing to wherever you put that pack. So it doesn't need to be in anywhere in the game folder. It could be anywhere else. And when you run Tailspire, you will see those custom assets there, even though you don't have the kelp mod, or if you don't have any mods at all, it will appear there. So that is basically it for adding um, custom minis uh, that you download from Tailspire. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about how to create those custom assets uh, for people who are uh, developing content and how to properly test them before uh, uploading them to uh, Thunderstore or uploading them lo locally to your players. See you in the next video.